Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. A confrontation with an aggressive e-cigarette user ended in a fistfight in a ban. The second story. By wasting my time and yours, you're wasting your own money. Keep going. The third story. Mass Exodus. How one resignation triggered a workplace revolution. The first story is... First time a customer has ever been physically violent with me. I work in a relatively small but popular pub. We're part of a national pub chain but known as a premium pub, due to selling food and have a variety of local ales. We're something of a tourist attraction due to the location and history of the pub. Roughly half our customers are tourists, foreign and British. Our chain, like several other pubs and restaurants, have restrictions on the use of e-cigs. Basically, it's fine to smoke outside within the premises, but not within the pub's rooms. This would predominantly be down to the sickly sweet haze of that develops from having several e-cigs going within a small enclosed room. It's not to everyone's taste. It's Friday and we're quiet due to it being post-Christmas, and people understandably being a tad low on funds. We're finished serving food for the night and I join my colleague, duty manager for the night, on the bar. Just the two of us due to being very quiet, and being only an hour or so till last orders. We'd had a group, two couples in their mid-30s, sat in the room directly opposite the bar for a while. All were quietly chatting and drinking. When I joined my colleague on the bar, she mentioned one of the group was using an e-cig. The smell was very strong. She said she hadn't seen him use it, and said to watch out for it. Sure enough, two minutes later the guy closest to the bar takes out an e-cig and takes a long drag. No worries, I think. Perhaps he just doesn't know our policy towards it. Most people don't. So I walk over and just politely ask him if he could use it out in one of our courtyards rather than inside, and explain its company policy. His wife slash girlfriend gives him an I told you so, whilst he stares at me blankly till I walk away. Ten minutes go by and sure enough he takes out the e-cig again, and bold as day takes another long drag. I walk over and a little more forcefully ask him to stop. His reply? Well, it's only us in this room, so I'll smoke it. If anyone else comes in, I'll stop. Me. Sorry, mate, but this is company policy to not smoke inside. Guy's wife slash girlfriend, as he petulantly rolls his eyes and avoids answering me. Don't do this again. Come on, don't kick off. In fairness, her saying that should have been something of a red flag, but I didn't think much of it as I went to close down and clean down some of our upstairs restrooms. I come down after about 15 minutes, and they're all still there. But the guy now is keeping his e-cig very visibly in his hand, and is glancing at my colleague on the bar. I work behind the bar, and within five minutes it's another drag, this time even longer and deliberately blown into the air making as big a display of it as possible. Colleague slash duty manager. Excuse me sir, but you've already been told by my colleague twice now. You're not allowed to smoke that in here. Please stop. Guy. It's only a... Colleague interrupts. You've been told already. If we see you do it one more time, we'll be taking your drinks off you. She then turned me and said none of them would be getting served again that night. We then get on with the little bar jobs that need doing so close to closing. A few minutes go by without a peep from the guy or his group, who in all fairness were quite pleasant. Out of the corner of my eye I see them all start to stand, gather coats and finish the last dregs of their glasses. Great stuff. No longer have to deal with it. Isig guy then finishes the last of his pint, takes the pint glass and hurls it across the room at the far wall. As he walks out through the pub entrance slash exit next to the bar's entrance, where I was stood, I asked whether there was any need in doing that. Guy, you've been harassing me all effing night, D-head. Me, there was no need in that though, was there? Guy, F off. At this point he goes to punch me but is intercepted by his mate, who in a not this again automatic move shoves him towards the exit. He only succeeds in grabbing me by the collar and forces himself past his friend and behind the bar with me. Thankfully, me pushing him off and his friend manhandling him from behind back towards the exit got him out from behind the bar, but not before he got a few surprisingly well-aimed kicks in. His friend's other half had the door open and out they tumbled into the front courtyard. The guy's wife slash girlfriend was still stood by the bar with a look of sheer shame on her face. I turned to her and told her he'd definitely be barred slash banned now, and if we saw him again that night, we'd be phoning the police. Looking back, I feel a bit sorry for her, especially as I probably barked it more than said it. She mumbled a so sorry and quickly went after the group. All in all, a couple of scratches and bruises is probably a decent return thinking how it could have ended if his friend hadn't stepped in. Assistant manager and a more senior manager watched the CCTV footage on Saturday morning. Both agreed he'd never be allowed back in again, 
and if I saw him again, they'd happily kick him out. Who would have thought that e-cigarettes could be the source of such dramatic events in a pub? This guy with the e-cigarette was clearly off his rocker and broke the rules despite friendly reminders. It was as if he decided that the cigarette in his hands was something he was entitled to, and he could just ignore the establishment's policy. But when he threw the glass across the hall, it was too much. You'd have to charge him double the price for breaking it. So when he decided to express his feelings physically, his friends intervened and sent him to the exit. Apparently, they know their friend and his penchant for fighting well. By the way, e-cigarettes versus fists is not the most common contest. In the end, the story ended with a victory of rule and order. A few bruises and scratches on legs is just a minor nuisance. I think it'll heal quickly, but the bruises that hits idiot will not heal soon. The second story is... You locked me out. How dare you lock me out? About seven years ago, I was working at the front desk of a very fancy hotel in a popular touristy city in Europe. Five stars. Michelin star restaurant inside the hotel. We understandably had a lot of very wealthy guests, and for the most part, they were very polite and tipped well, especially to me because I was the only one at the front desk who spoke properly fluent English. And whenever the front desk was quiet, I'd escort them to their rooms and show them all their perks in person. Because of the high price per night, a lot of the guests felt entitled to special services, including the most common one of extending their checkout time from 11 a.m. to some time in the afternoon. One such guest, a posh old British man, came down at around 10.55 a.m. on his last day and demanded, not asked, but loudly demanded, that I delay his checkout. Luckily for him, the next guest booked into that room had a planned nighttime arrival, so I politely told him I'd be happy to extend his stay, and was 3 p.m. late enough? He grunted and accepted. I scanned his room card and told him explicitly, All right, sir, that's all done. This card will give you access to the room until 15 exactly. Please bring all your belongings down before then so housekeeping can start preparing for the next guests. I'll be on break then, but one of my colleagues will be happy to finalize checkout with you. He accepted and went outside, so I thought that was that, and since I didn't see him before my break, I assumed that one of my fellow receptionists checked him out while I was out. But no, just before the end of my break, I hear infuriated screaming and recognize the old man's voice. He's yelling at the top of his lungs. You locked me out. You locked me out, you beep. How dare you lock me out when all my things are still in there? I rushed back for my last few minutes of peace to deal with him because I knew the other receptionist's English was rather weak. I calmly ask the man how I can help him and he keeps shouting at me. I wait until he's done, then say that I'd be happy to help if he would stop shouting and explain the problem. He finally starts yelling a bit less loudly and I understand that he can't access his room to get his stuff. I respond, all right, sir, let me check your card access details. Ah, uh, uh-huh, right. I see that we extended your stay to 15, is that correct? Man, hmm, but now I'm locked out. Me, yes, I understand. Sir, can you please tell me exactly what time it is? Man looks down at his watch. It's 15.07, I don't see what the issue is. Why would you treat a paying guest this poorly and lock them out? Mate, everyone here is a paying guest. Me, sir, I apologize for the inconvenience, but your key card access stops automatically at 15, as I explained to you this morning. This happens whether you've gotten your things or not, and is not controlled by me or any other particularly malicious staff members. Now I'll gladly escort you back upstairs and temporarily unlock the room for you to vacate, but you really will have to stop abusing the hotel staff. Now why don't we go upstairs and sort this out? Big polite smile. The man finally just shut up and followed me grumbling back up to his room. I opened the door for him and to my surprise, he hadn't even started packing. Now because of the high standards of the hotel, cleanup could take quite a while, so we had a late checkout fee that increased per minute of delay. Harsh, but it was clearly explained to all guests when they arrived, and the fee only applied to delays outside the standard, or adjusted checkout time, and even gave a 15 minute grace period. We even froze an additional amount on their cards during check-in in case guests left without paying. So usually the guests who ignored their checkout time knew exactly what they were doing and didn't mind paying the high fee. By this point, the man had already wasted 20 plus minutes being late and shouting at the front desk staff, and his room was such a mess that it took him another 40 plus minutes just to stuff his belongings into his many suitcases. By the time we were back in the lobby and beginning his checkout, his fee had grown to nearly half a night's stay. I said the fee was steep. He obviously got even angrier, but I basically told him he could either pay up now or let the fee keep increasing while he argued. He threatened to leave a terrible review on the Owl Review website, but honestly, I'm not sure. They didn't let me enter my room after telling me what time I could no longer enter my room, then charged me the fee they told me at the start they would charge me. Would be a very strong case against us, so I ignored him, took his money and called him a cab. He left in a huff, but not before I flashed him one final customer service smile and thanked him for staying with us. 
These are the kind of interesting situations that arise in luxury hotels with gorgeous guests, and especially when the guest considers himself so important the checkout time is just a trifle to him. For what reason have I been deprived of my liberty? He asks. After all, surely the hotel has no rules or policies, especially regarding checkout time. And I imagine that precious moment when he learnt that his access had ended. Well, dear guest, time is a pretty strict thing. It waits for no one, not even the most important ones. And of course, that priceless moment when he learned to the high late checkout fee that was rising by the minute. Let the fee keep going up while he argues, you say? Seems fair to me. If he chooses to ignore the time, then perhaps there's nothing left to do but pay the price. So dear friends, keep track of time, obey the rules and be polite in hotels. Otherwise, you may be deprived of your freedom. The third story is, I started a cascade of people putting in their two weeks notice. This morning I received confirmation that I had gotten a job with another company. That I wanted, and put in my two weeks notice. When I got into work tonight I saw six other people, two of which have been with the company for more than 10 years. Management has been out this week, some kind of retreat they do. They're absolutely going to flip their SH when they get back today, but they can't even come close to paying me what I will be making at this new place. I don't know if I'm directly responsible or if each of the individuals had their own plans in mind, but it feels strange that everyone chose today. Not surprising though, they pay us dirt and treat us the same. The pay disparity is absurd. We supervisors make 35k, and the middle management makes 80k, and the upper management makes 120k, and this is supposed to be a non-profit. Oh well, their problem now. Update. One of the managers logged into the system to read emails. I don't work until later tonight, so we shall see what happens tomorrow morning. Update. Email was sent out from upper management stating that roles and responsibilities would be expanded. No mention as to pay. Two more people resigned. No notice. Final update. Meeting was a straight up SH show. Three of the managers extended their stay at the resort in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and thus they Zoom called into the conference room. The rest of the managers and all the 40 remaining staff were there in person. They started out by handing out paperwork for us to read and sign. They told us that this was a revision to the job description in terms of employment. Basically, they tried to get people to sign it but no one wanted expanded job responsibilities without a pay increase, so they all just got up and walked out. I don't know what the repercussions will be because I literally printed out a letter of resignation and told the managers that there were that this was my last day and that they can send my final check to my address by Monday. I walked over to my terminal, deleted my user profile and all the non-proprietary data I had on my terminal. They're too cheap to back up all the contents of each device's local drives and grab my personal items and my bag of coffee from the kitchen and clocked out. Pretty sure a bunch of other people are now thinking about leaving as well. You seem to have unleashed a real revolution in your workplace. It's like a domino cascade that started with your firing. By the way, that story about trying to get employees to sign job expansions without a pay raise sounds like an attempt to sell air in packages. Your performance at the meeting must have been truly heroic. You decided to not expand without decent compensation and that's impressive. Hopefully other employees will make a similar decision and your company will start to think about pay equity. Good luck in your new job where hopefully the pay will meet your expectations. Thank you for your likes, comments, and subscriptions. I really appreciate it.